Welcome back to the channel. I'm Melissa and this is Jessica. And today we're gonna to be talking about how restrictive diets like Optavia are impacting your relationship with food. Oh gosh, so starting with Optavia, this is just about to open up a rabbit hole and a wormhole and a bag of worms, a can of worms. A, mole, a mountain out of a molehill? It, no, it's, I feel like, I feel no, like- No, this is the this mountain. This is the mountain. This There's is not no molehill. The molehill. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. Optivia, I just want to like be clear. There's no shame around it if you've done it. There is shame around <laughs> if you have the knowledge about why it's so terrible for you and then you continue like continue to do it or choose to do it, then shame, fine. No, I'm just kidding. You can't shame anyone. We're technically in the society, you're not allowed to shame anyone. 2023, right you no can't shame, shame on anyone. anyone. I take it back. There's no shame on you. Optivia is probably one of the most like restrictive warped diets that you can do nowadays. If you're not familiar with the program, they have a five, is it five in one? Five in a five in one program where you're supposed to eat five small meals a day, which let's just be real, they're not small meals, they are supplements. So whether that's a bar or a shake or like a little cup of noodles or something like that, you're able to eat five of these supplements and then you have one lean and green meal. Your lean and green meal is allowed to be anywhere from, I think five to seven ounces of protein, depending on what type of protein you choose. So if you have something like tuna, which has no fat in it, it's all protein, you can have seven ounces. But if you have something like salmon in it, you're only allowed to have five because it's higher in fat. Um, Tell them about the vegetables. Tell them about the green. Don't get me started on the greens. You're allowed to have a certain number of servings of vegetables with your a little bit of protein at the end of the day. The thing is, is that you're not supposed to have things like carrots because they have way too many carbs in them, even though it's only like two extra grams of carbs. You're allowed to have oh, like one and a half cups of things like broccoli or green beans or asparagus. And if you wanna get really crazy, you're allowed to have up to three cups of something like spinach or lettuce or you know romaine, something like that. You get this delicious tasty meal of a little bit of protein and a little bit of green vegetables at the end of the day as your one solid meal. That is the five in one plan. Let's talk about the five in one plan. When you are doing restrictive diets like Optivia, where you are forced to become reliant on products to sustain or maintain your weight loss, this is a problem because it's creating a warped relationship for you with food, with yourself, and with nutrition in general. Here's the problem. So many people who are on this five in one program, it's almost like they're so defensive of it. And the very first thing they'll say is, the program is teaching me how to have a better relationship with food because I'm eating all these meals throughout the day. So I'm not afraid of food. And I'm like, okay, well tell me what you're eating. And it's like, well, you know, this shake and this bar and this whatever, Lunchers, like crunchers, crunchers and all these things. And I'm like, so, do you pack all that with you when you go on vacation? Like, is this something where like you're able to like go out for dinner and like, or do you bring your bar? Like, yeah. If uh, your friends want to go out for lunch, do you bring your cruncher? Right. Or is that your one lean and green so, meal, and then you don't get to have dinner? Sure, you might be eating throughout the day. You're eating all these meals, but number one, they're not meals. Number two, you have to remember at the end of the day, they're products that you're purchasing from this weight loss company which they know benefits them and doesn't benefit you in any way because as soon as you're d like done with the program, are you just gonna buy fuel for the rest of your life? Like well, that's, that's what's encouraged as you move into a maintenance program is to reduce your number of fuelings but increase your number of lean and green meals. However, there's still reliance on fuelings. And like, don't get me wrong. Optivia produces incredible results with very fast weight loss but it's because you're only eating around 800 to 1,000 calories a day. And I understand that when you're in a position where you're in pain, you're frustrated, you want to lose weight as fast as possible, and everything else that you've tried doesn't work, and it feels like almost insurmountable to have to learn about nutrition and calories and how to buy healthy groceries and yeah. what foods I shouldn't should you'd rather You'd rather take the easy route right. and just kind of be like, okay, yes, give me all my feelings. I know exactly what to eat. Okay, I have one lean and green meal. Good. You like, don't have to think move about on, it. And yes. I'm gonna lose weight. I know I will lose weight. But then what happens is anyone who's come off of it, you gain 
only write back. Those are kind of like two sides of the coin where I understand it, but at the end of the day, if you look back on your history of dieting, most of the reason why you probably lost weight and gained it back is because you have not developed any type of nutritional knowledge. You have not developed any type of healthy habits that you can turn into a lifestyle. I understand you know, the idea of transitioning from your fuelings to more lean and green meals, but I have two problems with that. Number one, like you said, fuelings are not meals, they are snacks. Mm -hmm. Optivia touts them as like whole and complete sources of protein, they're nutritionally balanced, they are infused with vitamins and minerals and great, wonderful, However, they are still supplements. Mm -hmm. Supplement means in addition to, right? Supplemental to wholesome food. Correct. And if your five meals a day are coming from supplements, this means like 70 to 75% of your nutrition, your calories that are fueling your body are coming from a supplemental nutritional source. Not ideal. And this is why so many women are having health issues because all of their nutrition is coming from these types of products, right? Only 300 calories, if that, are coming from your lean and green meal, which is a whole food source. Mm -hmm. That's really, really scary. Mm -hmm. I understand yeah. like from a business standpoint, phenomenal business model. If you're yeah. reliant oh, on yeah. consistently buying and like, you know, paying money to have these snacks in order to lose weight, wonderful for business. You know you have a for whole you. audience dependent on the products that you produce. Mm -hmm. So yeah, great. Like we're gonna keep racking in the money yeah. while you get quick results. I could care less about how you actually do when you leave the program. All I care is that you're buying my fuelings and you're losing weight so that we have marketing materials. Mm -hmm. So you see that they really could care less about actually teaching you how to lose weight the right way. The other problem with this is the whole idea that like your one meal, like actual wholesome food source, number one is called lean and green. So then that is just setting you up in your mind for, okay, so I always have to have a lean protein. And if it's not lean, I can only have a little bit. Small amount. And then carrots are bad. What is it? Like Brussels sprouts are bad. Like, what, like they ha have a whole thing of vegetables to stay away from. So now, in your head, you're like, when I'm, you know, off of Octavia and I'm like, now like living real life, well, I can't have carrots, I can't have this, like this is bad. I should really only have like a lean protein and vegetable. Where's the carb? Where's like, the car where's your fruit? Like where are all these things that you should be having that are the lifestyle diet that you're looking for. It's not there. That is so hard because again, you are starting to be conditioned to look at foods as this is good, mm -hmm. this is bad. I can have this, I cannot have that. Mm -hmm. And so if you weren't already beyond confused with what you can and cannot eat or what you should or should not do, mm -hmm. now you go into yet another program where it says, hey, don't even worry about eating food. Mm -hmm. Just like take these fuelings. And then with your lean and green meal, make sure the protein is mm -hmm. super super lean and then make sure you're only eating green vegetables and it can only be a cup and a half mm -hmm. of green vegetables. Otherwise, yeah. like this is bad. So now when you go, you go off, like you said, you don't even know how to create a balanced meal for yourself. Yeah. Another thing just to keep in mind, and this is something I'm like slightly tangential, I guess, but it's in the same vein of like a healthy relationship with food is Optivia says on their site that the lean and green meal is family friendly. Let's just talk about this for a second because if you have children, there's no way that your child is gonna want a piece of lean tuna and like a cup of vegetables for dinner. It's just probably not going to happen. Now, here's the other side of the thing. Your kids are like sponges and they're watching what you do. And your kids are gonna grow up thinking that a good relationship with food means I have to buy supplements and products and I can't eat like wholesome foods because mommy doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. So now you are, it's family friendly, yay, but now your kids are watching everything that you're doing. It's not family friendly, it's not sustainable, it's not real food, you're eating products. The one meal that you can't have isn't even a balanced meal. A balanced meal. That's really problematic because again, like you said, you're, you're kind of laying this foundation for your children or your family around like, again, this food is good, this food is bad. This helps make me skinny or healthy and this does not. And when that starts to become really dangerous because if you know carbs are completely emitted at dinner, well, why can't mom have potatoes? Why can't mom have exactly. rice? Why can't mom have pasta? Is pasta bad? Should I not be eating pasta? Exactly. It's really damaging and this is how you know generations of women mm -hmm. specifically get targeted with these types of diets because you're almost indoctrinated, whether it's consciously or subconsciously from a young age of, well, my mom never you know ate yeah. the same meal as us for dinner. So I, you mean, know, don't, I learned that was bad. 
as an Optivia have a plan for like 13 year olds to 17 year olds? Like they this do. is, it's just, it's starting young. They don't care it's, if you're in pain, they have something to sell you. It's not actually teaching you a lifestyle. Again, this is just really problematic because if you don't understand the nutritional value of your food, right? You don't understand like what is a carb source? What is a protein source? What is a fat source? What does fat, what do fats do for my body? Like how do they help me function and thrive? What do proteins do? What do carbs do? Why do I need all three of those in different quantities in order to make myself feel energized and healthy and to thrive? If you don't understand that and you don't develop that base knowledge, then we're just continuously slapping band-aids on the problem. You're overweight because you, you do not have a set of healthy habits. Mm -hmm. You're overweight because you have a damaged relationship with food. You're overweight because no one's ever taught you truly what is right for you. Not just a cookie cutter program that millions of other women are doing. What is truly right for you and your lifestyle? How do you take these healthy habits and apply it to you? So that's the problem. And then when we are in a place where sure, you want to lose weight, you're desperate, you're willing to throw money at a situation to make it go away, understood, it probably will go away because you're in an extreme calorie deficit, that's great, but is it something that's sustainable long-term? And I'm going to say there are some women who have done Optavia who have been able to sustain their weight loss. Great, wonderful, then they have transitioned out in an appropriate way. But the vast majority, and I would say over 80, to 90% of women who do this program end up regaining all of the weight they lost plus more. So the only thing that you've done is spent a lot of money, you've lost weight in a very unhealthy, unsustainable way, you've created a lot of metabolic damage, you've created probably digestive damage, issues, digestive issues, thyroid issues, gallbladder. you know, adrenal issues, you're, maybe you've lost your gallbladder, who knows? But you've created all of these issues in an attempt to lose weight extremely fast in an extremely dangerous way. And then as soon as you're done doing it, it's like none of it ever happened because you end right back up at square one. So even though I understand the desire to make it happen as fast as possible, at some point we have to shift the mindset away from quick and fast and easy and I don't want to have to think about it to, well, if I want it to last long term, I probably better start fucking thinking about it pretty quickly mm -hmm. because if I don't ever think about it, then I'm never actually going to develop the habits that I need to solve this issue. I mean, it just goes back to the whole point of there's no shortcut to what you're trying anything. to do. Like there's no shortcut to anything, number one, especially when it comes to weight loss. Point blank, there is no shortcut. If you are overweight, you need to do things the right way and it's gonna take a little bit of time if you actually want to maintain your results. Optivia is a shortcut. For the majority of people, you are not gonna maintain your results. And so all you're doing right now is temporarily losing a bunch of weight, suffering, causing a whole bunch of health issues to just gain all your weight right back. So if you are doing this program, we highly suggest that you probably reassess and try to find something else that is going to teach you how to have a better relationship with food, is going to teach you about proteins, carbs, and fats, It's gonna teach you what the right ratio is for you and your body and your health issues. Do you have hormonal imbalances? Do you have digestive issues? If you have hormonal imbalances and I have digestive issues, we should not be on the same five in one plan because there's gonna be different macro ratios that you should have, different things that I should have. They should not be the same thing. All we're trying to do is bring awareness to the fact that programs like this can be very dangerous and it can contribute to a very poor relationship with food. And at the end of the day, if you have a bad relationship with food, it's going to be very difficult for you to ever make true progress. And if we're really fired up about this, and if we seem like angry, this is not an attempt from us to bash Optivia. This is not an attempt at us to make you feel bad if you've done it in the past. This is not an attempt to make you feel bad if you're currently doing it right now. This is just to say Optivia is one example of thousands and thousands of other programs exactly like this that have looked at the opportunity to take advantage of people who are suffering, people who are in pain, people who they know psychologically are vulnerable and are willing to trade money for a result that they know at the end of the day is probably going to fail for 90% plus of their customers. We've both suffered through that for decades. We watched our mom, we watched 
our women family members, friends. Yeah. We've watched a lot of people go through that torture of not being able to enjoy you know, family events, not being able to go out to dinner, anxiety, guilt, shame around food. Mm -hmm. We understand what it's like because we've lived it. And so when there is a mass program like this that's making millions and millions of dollars that is touted by health experts, is developed by health experts, this is just our way of saying you need to do better. And if you're someone who is feeling vulnerable, if you're someone who is feeling desperate, you just need to know that there are alternate ways to achieve the same result in a way that's actually going to last you long term. So this is just us urging you. I know it seems like it's something quick. I know it seems easy. I know it seems like, you know, this is just gonna be the best way yeah. to do something, but we don't want it to be temporary for you. Like what you said, it's like, I'm just gonna temporarily do it till I get to my weight loss goal and then from and there. And then figure it out, but it never, never works happens. that way. It just never works that way. You have to do it from step one and just take one step at a time and do it the right way. We hope this was helpful for you and if this video resonated with you in any way, make sure you subscribe to our channel that way. You're always alerted whenever we drop new educational videos and you can start to really find your home here and start to educate yourself and soak it all in and understand there is a right way to do things and you don't have to suffer to get the results that you want. Again, if this was helpful, if you had an Optivia experience, if you know anyone who has, make sure you comment below, let us know what your experience was. If you have any questions, if you're currently on it, let us know. We're here to help you and we hope that we can help guide you on your new sustainable journey.